welcome back to another lesson in Swift for Beginners. In the last lesson, we discussed strong versus weak in terms of memory management. And today we're going to be discussing another one of my favorite topics, uh, that being closures. So let's jump right into things. So let's actually just title this as closures and let's get started with this. Cool. So a closure is something that's kind of tough for people to wrap their heads around. So I'm going to do my best to explain this um, and please leave a comment if I could clarify in any possible way. Um, closures are very commonly used in Swift. So again, very important topic. So a closure is simply a function that can be passed around. In computer science, this is also called a lambda. So let's actually put this up here. So what does that mean? So let's start off by creating a function. Um, and let's say is greater than three. It takes in a number. Let's say it's an integer and it returns a bool. And let's just say we can say if number is greater than three, return true, otherwise return false. So this is a pretty, pretty simple function. We've seen a function similar to this in the prior lessons. We have the name of the function, the parameter that goes in, what it'll return. We do a basic greater than check in here. And we have a return false if um, if it's uh, not in this in this condition. If it's not greater than three, if it is greater than three, we return true. So what we can do for a closure sake, let's create a variable and call it my function. And if we take a look at the signature of this function, this function takes in an int and returns a bool. So this can actually be represented as a type of taking in an int and returning a bool. Let's make it optional so it doesn't complain. So let's see. So this actually needs to be in parentheses as those are the parameters. So let's take a look at what this actually is doing. This is, is defining this variable name and this is the type. But wait a second, how can a function be a type? So a function is, if you think about it at, at a higher level, is just a named set of code or instructions that takes in a parameter and returns something. And optionally, it might not take in anything, right? So why can't we define this as a as, as something in a variable we can and that is what a closure is so let's say this equals number in and let's take this code and put this in here so this function here is completely equivalent to the value of this variable so what we can do here is say this and pass in, let's say four. What we could also do similarly here is call this function and pass in four. So the difference is while one is a fully defined function, this one is a and let's see, why is this complaining? Well, this is, we're saying this was an optional, so let's get rid of this, which is why it's complaining, because we have to unwrap it first. But, but this one up here, for sake of difference between these two, is the function assigned to a variable. And the power of this is we can, because we can pass variables around into other functions, you can start to think about how complex you can create function chains where you can have one function you call and a parameter you pass in could be another function, but represented as a variable, AKA a closure. So let's explain the syntax a little bit. You're saying the type is a function and the function is this whole thing in parens, parentheses. 
it takes one parameter of an int type. Notice we don't give a parameter name here. And it returns a bool. To actually assign it, we just create the function body. And for each of the parameters we're passing in, this is where we put the name of the parameter. So we have an int, and we're going to call it number. We can, in theory, call it whatever we want. And different from a function, we're going to say the parameters, and if you have more than one, they would be comma separated, the parameter in this block. And you can use it down here. Um, so similarly to this function, we're saying if number is greater than three, return true, otherwise return false. And what that says is, the while this whole thing is a function, because we can call it like a function, the result of this should be a bool. So if we come over here, we'll see that the result that's printed out is actually the bool, true or false, returned as a result of calling this function. Now, not all closures, similar, rather exactly the same as a function, needs to have a return value. It could just be it returns nothing, which is void. And in the newer versions of Swift, this is represented by um, just parentheses. I prefer void. This is still syntactically correct. But void is the same thing as nothing. So we can, in here, get rid of this and get rid of this. So why would we want to do this, right? We can, let's say, have a function that's going to go and do something in the background for us. But maybe it won't return something. We can put that into a closure, which is this variable, and we can invoke it from somewhere else in our code. And as a result, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. So it's extremely important that you understand this notion of assigning a function to a variable and being able to pass that variable around opposed to defining one function at one place and having to access it from other functions and other classes. This makes it very, very, um, in, in computer science, we would call it very flexible and decoupled. Um, you are making it flexible to pass this around and take in different values and do different things. So that's basically what a closure is. So if we wanted this, and well, let's actually go back and we can, I'll show you this because we had it before. We had a, um, let's see, we had a uh, question mark here before, and it was yelling at us about this, because we're trying to call this, this variable, which is indeed a closure, and pass in a number. But this is optional, so we can put this here, right? And it, it's okay. But similarly to unwrapping any optional, what you can do is you can say if let my real func equals this, you can do this. Because it's nothing more than something being held in a variable. Even though it's a function, it's treated just the same as something being in a variable. And, and every other rule still applies to this. Because it's a var, it can be mutated. We can assign another, um, another closure to it. And closures are fun and functions, I'm saying them very like interchangeably, and they're basically the same thing. But the main thing to know is a, like, a closure in the, a function in the context of a closure is a function assigned to a variable and not this function. But anyways, because it's a, uh, it's a variable, we can come down here and let's copy and paste this. Let's get rid of this. And we can get rid of this. Um, and let's also get rid of that for the sake. And here we can do, we, we can basically reassign this function because it's a variable. And that's kind of the point I wanted to make that because it's a variable, all the rules still apply. If it was a constant and it was let to my function, um, obviously we cannot change this. And just so you guys understand, let me, um, let me actually call this function and show you guys the result of it. So if you give it just a second here, let me actually say a result. 
equals this. I want to say result 2 equals this. They're both going to function the same way. And this is, this is yelling at us because we haven't used this value um, later on. But you can see that the actual function itself works in both cases. Um, we need to change this to be a bool return true here again and then return false here. And if we go and take a look at um, look at this, we can see that the true true or false respectively of the number that we pass in um, here and here, they work identically the same. Um, but we can call it in these two different ways. Um, a key, another key difference, which I personally I, I like it better in the function situation opposed to a closure, is when you call a function. You get A and autocomplete, but you get the parameter name that is in the function before uh, you actually type in the value when you're calling the function. Whereas in a closure, you can just literally pass in the name and actually doing something like this is not correct. And the reason it's not correct is, well, A, in this case, it looks like this function, but also um, what it just expects an int, int, an int in this uh, case, but if we had let's say an int and another int, and we would say number and other, we can do something like that, and that's perfectly fine too. But I hope that kind of gives you a clear idea of what a closure is, what the benefit of them are, and a nice little intro to how to use them and create them. Um, I will stress that this is something that you're going to have to do several kind of practice sets uh, for and get a stronger understanding of it. It becomes pretty tricky once you have one parameter in a function as a, another function, which calls another function. It kind of becomes function inception. Um, but yeah, I'm going to end the lesson here. I hope uh, this was clear as to what it is, how to use it. Please leave a like, comment, uh, follow, subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next lesson.